agency and address emerging issues, but I feel we spend more time talking about actual agenda items. This should be discussed more. I'm kind of looking for what we should be doing. Should I be doing something differently? Should the executive committee do be doing something differently? I'm just looking to understand your guidance. This was in my comments to Brad in his uh, review, performance. his performance yes. review. Um, when I wrote this, this was some time ago, I think we're starting to get there. What I, this is my own personal feeling about what I thought the role of the executive committee, why we went to doing this on a monthly basis, was we weren't another committee to just go over agenda items as the planning and fiscal finance committee does. In my mind, in my mind, and I think, I believe it was uh, Commissioner Long that actually brought the whole idea of the executive committee regularly meeting, so that we could talk more philosophically about where the organization is going or how to address these issues that sometimes arise and have those hard conversations that aren't related to a tighter contract or you know, that we were going to talk a little more philosophically about where we were going. Now, we did start to do that. The meeting I had to leave early a couple of months ago, we started to have those conversations, I think. You know, so I, I think we're on our way. I I just didn't want to have a repeat in our exec... What I was seeing at that time when I wrote this was that we were just repeating what the other two committees have already done. And I I felt that we were a little bit and you're, you're beyond referring, that. If I may, you're referring to the review of the upcoming agenda. We should just be more focused on what items are on the agenda, not what will be covered in that agenda item. Yes, unless, and, uh, unless there is, a, again, a more policy-driven, philosophical discussion to be had about it. But yeah, we don't need that whole presentation detail thing. But that's the way I felt. So we're trying to help the, same thing to the any, administrative staff to guide any, the agency. Is there any uh, support for doing something different than what the vice chair is I'm not sure exactly what you mean by philosophical discussions. If you mean that the discussions need to be based on are we are we doing what we should be doing that relates back to the goals that we've set and how does this policies may be a better word. How does this how do these agenda items reflect that? Strategic. Then then yeah, yeah, then yeah I'm on that's board where I'm that. going. But I do I guess there's a balance for me because we meet the, the whole board meets once a month. We're a huge board. This agenda is the order and the business of the day. So I do feel like discussion of the agenda is important. But I sense that maybe what you're saying is, is that we don't need to get so much in the weeds. We yes. don't need to dig into the consent items. Yes, it's, it's are these action items that we're looking at, do they fit into our plan? Yeah, but are we... And are we, are we presenting them appropriately? Are we, you know, if there, for instance, Okay, we had the, the last agenda meeting, we had a discussion of, of reduction of service, right? So maybe as an executive board, our conversation might have been about that. Um, you know, are we allowing enough time for that conversation? How do we feel it's going to go over? And anything we can do to address that? Is, is, do you know what I'm, right. where well, I'm that, going? I'm, yeah. I like that. I mean, I think that's exactly what the executive committee should be focused on because nothing infuriates me more. And in this uh, agency, this board that I sit on, it has been consistent ever since I came here. We have we have an agenda that has a time frame attached to it nine times out of ten. And almost without exception, we don't you know, we don't ever get through it without somebody having to leave because they believed what was here, that the meeting was going to be from nine or nine thirty till eleven or noon or whatever. And then it's twelve thirty or it's yeah. quarter to one and we, you know, I I'm yeah. I know Commissioner Welch is busy as well. Well, we all are, but you can't, you know. I think that time thing should say estimated because if it's an issue 
like route modifications. You know, right, you know, but then you thing. don't add 20 things right. behind it yeah. that makes it impossible for you to get done in a collaborative and thoughtful way. You know, that's not fair to our citizens who want to engage and be part of this process. I guess it's a matter of perspective because our meetings used to go a lot longer. Yeah, I know. So, so I, I know we're we, coming from it from a different better, perspective. But I get what you're saying. It's, you know, there's got to be some control, and I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, but you need to use your gavel. I haven't seen you use that once. I I have a couple things that I want to cover a little later in this agenda. Yeah, I know, that that talk about that. Um, and I, so I have some suggestions yeah. to that end too. So, but, but you see where I'm going. It's more, you know, are we are it. From an I agency standpoint, are we meeting our our goals and objectives? We're, you know, all board members should be doing that, but we're the ones looking at it on a monthly basis. Are we moving I forward? I sense that that we are in agreement, and that we can move, go back to our original uh, item, which was the draft and the discussion of either deleting that or modifying that or including something. And I, I guess I'm looking for a suggestion in terms of a motion or, or I move approval of what Commissioner Bojowski said. Okay. <laughs> Would you <laughs> <reach it? laughs> Keeping it as is? No. Uh, I remove that. But I, I was saying we should include, and I'm just looking at it now, the response to the 2015 performance evaluation that you just gave us a copy. So give me a quick second. Let me just at least look at the headings here. Mr. Chair? May, may I, I don't know if this is what Vice Chair Bajowski is suggesting, but um, perhaps sort of leaving that sentence there, but instead of just citing improved communication and accountability, cite with the with the um, August 24th response to the performance evaluation and the steps laid out in that, the, with the steps Mr. Miller laid out in that action plan, we support continued leadership to accomplish the strategic plan goals. So you're referencing that this is this is this is why we think we can adopt and uh, support the strategic plan, and not which does encompass accountability and communication to Commissioner Welch's comments, but as the primary items in here, but it speaks to the whole doc, the whole action plan. Suggestion? You could um, say with improved communication and accountability, comma, inclusive of the CEO's August 24, 2015, performance evaluation response, we support CEO Brad Miller's continued leadership. So just add that one part of the sentence. Okay. Is that a motion? Yeah, she was that was The reason I liked Commissioner Long's suggestion, mm -hmm. and I understand also what she was saying about out of respect for the tabulation sheet. Brad, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I just need to be honest. It may be a little hard to digest folks to say we support CEO Brad Miller's continued leadership. That might be a hard statement for some people to swallow. The sentence, though, is constructed as a conditional. It, it, it's an if-then statement. So the conditional is with improved communication and accountability, then we support. That's how I read the sentence, and that's why I'm inclined to that's why I, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Welch's uh, comments to include it. Okay. And it's inclusive of everything Brad's laid out. Okay. Yeah. And as we said, it's up to Brad to execute. He's got to execute everything in there. Okay. And, and I, I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, ornery about this. I just want to make sure <laughs> that 
that everybody recognizes what we're doing here by bringing this the way this is that you suggested to the full board. It is opening up an entire reevaluation process at the board level. Given the scores that are on this sheet, and that's what I'm trying to avoid in an effort to give Brad the time he needs to make these changes. Um, I can think of a couple of people that are just going to be ready to pounce all over it. But that's, that and that's and, and that's what I understood you to be saying. That you were trying to avoid that. That's why I was supportive of removing it, just because of. Um, I mean, if that's what we want, Commissioner Wells, well forward. So, Commissioner, you think by removing that sentence, you're going to avoid that conversation? Well, I think that our the leadership of this executive committee needs to position that in the messaging of this recommendation. Yeah. I think that does that, but it also recognizes, okay. acknowledges the issues that we've had. And that I could be wrong. I could that, be totally wrong. You know, we're going to address Remember it. who's on I know, but it reminds me of what the school board is going through right now. If you don't acknowledge the issue and set forth how you plan to deal with it, to me it just makes it worse. But I think we can do that without making this statement. That I just mentioned. That's the. It's that's one statement that. Was it proof communication? That statement. No. Well. The other one. statement. The, the next sentence does that say we recognize you've okay. made a number of positive recent improvements, but further progress is needed. And really, after that, you could say, we request or uh, we accept the document dated 8/24 performance evaluation response and feel that that should be reviewed, you know, that's part of the next six months review or, or something to that effect. That could be stated in this option B. Because it is saying we recognize he has made a number of positive recent improvements but further progress is needed. Please see the August 24th document of the evaluation response. Um, my reaction to that is it gets, gets a lot pretty wordy. Yeah. Well, if I you're like removing the other sentence, yeah. if you're removing the other sentence is what I'm saying, then you would add some sentence, and I don't know the right wording, some sentence in regards to this, that we expect this to be done and a part of not just the strategic plan, this is more the administrative side of it. So you've got your strategic plan that we expect to be evaluated on, but we also expect that this administration side of it will be completed as well. So however we say it, I don't want to get into the wordsmithing thing, but, but if that's the message that we're sending, because we are saying we recognize he's made a number of positive recent improvements, but further progress is needed. He needs to follow the strategic plan, and we need to evaluate him based on that, and he also needs to follow this improved administrative plan, and we should evaluate him on that in six months. That's the message I think we should be giving, you know, the board. Does that make any sense? I think adding that sentence gives you all of everything you just said? The, the phrase. Yeah. So Inclusive of the CEO's August 24, 2015 evaluation response. So everything he said here, he's got to execute. And if he does that with improved communication and accountability and everything else, including the path forward, <coughs> then we move forward. I, I can tell you that as a per sorry, Mr. as a personnel committee team, I mean, the statement that I'm wanting to, the part of the statement I'm wanting to remove is really what I got stuck on. And I'm, I'm I know I'm not going to be the only one. That's true. I, and I, I just think we have to have that conversation. When you look at PSTA, I, I started the first sentence, do we believe that the path forward is the right path for the organization? Yes. Do we believe that if we do everything in these documents, we're going to be where we strategically want to be? Uh, I think
think all those questions are yes. And I think you're acknowledging through this document what the board's been concerned about, what I've been concerned about, very frankly. It's all in this document. And I think you give your CEO a chance to execute that. Now, there are unlimited chances, and, and Brad's aware of that. But I think you give him his opportunity to execute that. That's what the evaluation is supposed to be about. So I'm fine with it. I would move option B with the addition of that phrase after the word accountability, comma, inclusive of the CEO's August 24, 2015 evaluation response. And then we support CEO Brad Miller's continued leadership. Second. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't get the second. Uh, Mr. Rice. Thank you. Uh, is there further discussion? All in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Okay. That passes three to two. The so is there any other comments relative to our agenda item on the personnel committee? I don't know if this is the best place to put this in, but um, I did want to mention that um, I think it would be helpful if we suggested a, a legend for what the, the numbers mean so that uh, we're all on the same page for, I mean, to some people it might be obvious, but, but maybe not. Okay, what, what you're getting at is the, the format that is going to be yes. in, in forward and I totally agree with that yes. suggestion. And with yeah. with many people talk about it. When when we get the draft, we'll see if that would be a recommendation okay. that I would think we would want to make. Is there any objection to people trying to do that? So let's let's just adopt that as a recommendation to the CEO by consensus. And I wanted to get a sense, I, I, I'm not tied to this, I just felt it was worthwhile to have a small discussion on it. Um, I, know, I know the Brad's probably talked to everybody about this, I know there was some discussion about um, hiring a strong number two. Um, at, least he's, at least he's mentioned it to me. Um, I wanted to get everybody's feeling about that. Um, if we should be moving forward with something like that. Now, normally, like I said, I, that's, or like I know, that's an administrative thing. Um, I'm wondering if that's something that we feel is something productive to do uh, now versus later. I think organizationally it's a real um, must, and I believe Brent's working on that. Can you not? I think I'm working on uh, implementing the strategic plan and these goals, and um, whether or not or exactly the timeline of that will be based on ability to implement these goals. If the executive committee or the PSA board wants to give a specific recommendation on an employee of mine? No, That's I fine, would, no, but, I was um, not I was not thinking of that at all. I, I was not thinking of a person per se. I uh, know, I'm just saying it's the idea. Again, the goal is to implement the the these items and the strategic plan. You know, I think that might something having a there's pros and cons. And uh What's the negative of having a strong number two? Most organizations I've ever been involved in have had a strong leadership team. Right? I mean, oh, my, recognizing myself, I think, that's, I think that's kind of within Brad's 
environment, if he wants to bring that forward, it would be part of the budget adjustment that could be done yeah. mid-year, if, if, if that's helpful. Well, I, think, I do think it's important to identify number two. I mean, it might be someone that Brad already has, can be Sandra, James, whomever. That's his decision as a CEO, right. but we need to know if he gets hit by a bus or wins a lottery or whatever. The organization needs to continue, and we need to know who that number two is, and I've expressed that to Brad as well. Yeah. Same thing with our BTS department. I've told uh, Marty the same thing. I need to know who your number two is. Yeah. You know, it's BTS. Uh, business Technology Services. It's the county's IT county. board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Same issue there. So it's up. It's county wide. No, I mean does he have one? Um, <laughs> it's almost the same issue. <laughs> Urgent to identify. Problematic. And that's that's. Yeah. The, it's more the policy. I'm not trying to get into the administration side of it, but I don't know how else to bring it up in here. what environment to bring it up. So I figured here was the best way. It it's almost more of a succession. Yes, uh, succession planning. Yeah. There you go. So great lines. So if we if we ask the CEO to at least have that yeah. as as an action, then we would. And I and I if, if everybody would be okay, and that's the perfect word, succession planning. Um, maybe that could be, you know, added to the goals. However he chooses to do that, we could add that to the goals of this year. Succession planning. Would everybody, everybody be okay with that? I, I, I could go with that. I mean, that, that could even be applicable for all departments, not just the CEO. Right. But yeah. um, all departments, just in PSTA, a, a sense of uh, building the bench. Um, yeah. So if we could add that to this year's goals, that, that would make me happy, however that works out. Is there consensus to do that? I move the. I move the in, in the goals and objective documents, succession planning, PSTA, critical. Yes. So second. Was that a second? All right. Uh, in further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Is there anything else dealing with the personnel committee recommendation? I do not have anything on my list. Beyond that, so uh, hearing nothing else, the September board agenda is included in your package on page 38. Um, consistent with our with previous discussion, uh, just thriller, any. Well, again, uh, recognizing the con concerns that you uh, brought up earlier about the timing, uh, we have been trying to focus on keeping the board meetings to one one significant item, really, as I think what we can cover typically in a two-hour meeting. Um, the last board meeting was longer because we had two hours of public comment. Then we had a regular, a relatively regular two-hour PSDA meeting. Did not anticipate the entire Sierra Club coming and talking about what kind of bus to buy. That was surprising, but, um, uh, but we'll, you know, try to do our, a better job of reading the, the public. Um, on this agenda here, the, the main item, again, we're setting aside one main item, which will be the performance evaluation process performance evaluation approval. This is a night meeting. You probably don't, no one probably has an interest in having it actually go two hours, but that will be the main discussion. Um, the transit development plan is a FDOT requirement, but it will um, not, not be a major item, I think. I don't know if any member of the public has uh, much input on that. Um, the legislative committee, uh, made some recommendations to add a couple items to our legislative priorities, so that'll come to the to the board. Um, I don't know of any major concern with that. Um, Commissioner Welch, um, two meetings ago, asked for a presentation on all the things that we're doing in our DART program to uh, make that improved customer service there. We've done a lot of things, and so um, I think we'll have a maybe a full presentation at the planning committee on that, and then 
maybe a revised or just a summary kind of thing at the, at the board meeting under information items. Same thing under write your alternatives. This is some more detail on my proposal to um, look into Uber and Lyft as alternatives for customers, for people affected by changes in routes. And um, again, more detail at the planning committee than a summary at the board meeting. Um, we, I like the idea of putting approximate times uh, or something like that on here. Um, you know, that, that was an idea. Our agenda previously did not have any times listed, and then Jeff Danner, who came in as chair after R.B. Johnson, when the meetings were going till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, made it his number one focus to end the meetings before lunch, and so he suggested putting those times as inspirational to the um, board members. Maybe they're not, they're not that influential. So, um, in, I, I have been in favor of having times on here. The thing that threw us for a loop was the public hearing, because that could have taken ten minutes instead of the uh, on the whole agenda. I probably could have taken a half hour instead of uh, two hours, and that that's an unaccounted. I, I think we have to be here and listen to the public for whatever, unless. We want to do like the, the Flowater Council rules say, we limit public comment to 30 minutes unless it's extended by the board. Now that would be a that would be an option, but that means you're cutting people off, and I don't find that uh, I don't support that no. really. So, but the. Uh, I'm I, for guidance. I think. Um, when I, when I see this agenda, and I mean, one of the things I've discovered this year coming in to being mayor and running Dunedin's board, uh, which, you know, was a completely different role for me. So I've learned a lot in the last year about this kind of thing. And Rob and I, our city manager, review our agendas at gr great length, and, and I am always moving things out because I try to keep our meetings at three hours. I feel like that's accomplishable before you're brain dead at night, you know? Um, so I would say the same for for PSDA, especially given the fact we only meet once a month. I think a three-hour meeting is reasonable. But when I look at this agenda, I see this going longer because of the type of items that would be discussed. For instance, even the rideshare alternatives program, I think that's going to spark a lot of conversation, a lot, because it's all new and new new modes, and people are going to throw out stuff. So you want to allow that to have time, and just knowing our board makeup, that's going to spark conversation, in my opinion. Um, I think the three action items you have are going to take up to three hours for the two hours, whatever you have planned here. I, I mean, I think the performance evaluation is going to be a long dialogue. I feel that way. Um, transit development plan, that's probably at least a, a 10 minute presentation. I mean, that's that's a, an annual thing that's gonna take some time, just the presentation itself now, but there may not be discussion on it. I just, I feel like we're, the number of items on here we're setting ourselves up to go over. That, that's just my feeling, using the same critique I would use for my Dunedin meeting when I look at it. So. Let, me, let me throw out that we could put a uh, limit on the discussion of the ride share, and this could be just an early, an early look. Um, I would think that the dark service update, we've had several people, we've got several comments from the public, concerns about that, and I, I, I would not want to, I, I think that's something that we need to cover. Um, Maybe we could move out the ride share alternatives to the following month, because I mean, you're going to keep coming up with new stuff. It's not like, is yeah. it time sensitive for us? No, neither of the information I items mean, are time sensitive. We could but, but it was requested, though, the DART thing. I mean, so 
So to me, I think maybe the rideshare alternatives could move out to the following month. It doesn't mean you can't go over those things with the committees. We, we could have them in the agenda package, including the, the details, but at that time, depending on what time it is, say we have we have used up our target at three hours, uh, unless there's the wishes of the board to continue, we will cover this at the next meeting. That would allow for discussion if we got through the yeah. information quickly. And that, that, that's how we've handled the informational items in the past. Uh, that's fine. How are, how are you guys going to handle but, but the, the sense of the, of the executive committee is you do want to keep our meetings to about three hours. Nine <coughs> given the fact we only meet once a, once a month and given the fact that we're more more heavily involved than MPO, I think, you know, from a structure perspective. I'm, I'm just on the other side. I, I think the fact that we only meet once a month and we're dealing with some pretty weighty issues, we might have a four-hour meeting, nine to one. I don't think well, that's no. no I don't think it is either. I think I think we can plan for it though. Well, I think we can plan for it. On if the there county commission, for example, issues. I mean, we routinely break for lunch and come back. Mm -hmm. and we meet twice a month plus right. workshops. So I just think, given the weight of what we're dealing with, we just might have to suck it up and do a four or five hour meeting. Given we've I got weighty issues that we need to deal with. And I, I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. I think we can, and maybe we can. No, I don't have this dialogue. Be, no, but, but I, I think we can have that dialogue here, don't you? And then say, yes, these are important issues. The thing is, let's, you've got let's a shoot out an email. Board, and a lot of those folks aren't on executive, and they they want to weigh in, and they should weigh in. Right, and that's what I'm saying. We could maybe that is part of the dialogue here. We're we're looking at the agenda as as the chairman has brought forward, and yes, we and we say from a policy standpoint, these are important issues. We need to talk about them and shoot out an email. We expect the meeting to run long, make plans accordingly. And what, what's the problem if we know it's going to be Wednesday? Do we have to start at 9? Couldn't we start at 8? We should start at 8.30, didn't we? No. Yeah. No, and y'all will kill me because I, getting <laughs> down here at, at 9 o'clock is hard enough for me. So. This is a 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah, this is a 6 p.m. meeting right. now. But your, your meetings, because you're a special district, your meetings have to be advertised a year in advance. So if we oh. are changed the time of a specific meeting, we have to go through the whole process of advertising and sending oh. yeah, no, to every city and, well, okay, and the okay. county that's a member of the district. Yeah. So it's a little bit different than at your cities and the county mm -hmm. change, in terms of changing a date and a time. And we just went through that with changing and moving the meeting to the so I just want you to be aware. We're required a year ahead of time to give notice of every regular meeting. But I think being able to notify the board that says we think this meeting is going to run long. We don't know how much longer, but just be aware so you're not planning a 12:30 lunch somewhere with somebody. And I think that's respectful of the board's time while addressing the issues we need to do. And that's I think absolutely something the executive committee can be. And then, is it possible that we could, if we see that it's going really long and it gets to be quarter to 12 and there's still a whole bunch of people that want to be heard or whatever, can we break? Yeah. And everybody knows, hey, if you want to get a bite to eat, now's the time or, or whatever. I mean, I always do breaks yeah, like at my that. meeting. Like every two hours. Every break? Well, yeah, because I, do, I mean, I you break and only absorb so much and you need to be you need to be able to get up. And move around and we make phone calls. We have several conversations going on. Sorry. Um, I think I've heard you and you. I, the the having a 10 minute break every two hours, I think, is reasonable. I'm, <coughs> if we have a half hour break, I'm not sure oh, we'll, we'll get people yeah. Yeah. back. No. Um, it's, it's a concern that I have. You know, we, we do have snacks in the back room for board members, we don't mm -hmm. provide them. Public, but I, I'm, I'm a little, <coughs> I'm, 
I, I'm not, help me out there. Well, 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 on on the commission we break, yeah. and people Pre don't noted. leave. Right. They, they might leave the <coughs> building, but they come right back. It's noticed in our agenda items at 1230, I think. Yeah. Preference, you want to do it that way? Well, we we, we mean, could we notice at 12:30 that um, if the meeting goes past 12:30, there'll be a half-hour break or whatever. You at the chair's discretion. I mean, if we've only got one item left, you can say let's just finish yeah. it up. If you got two or three big items left, and I want to break for 15, 30 minutes and grab a sandwich or whatever, and come back and finish. I like that. Okay. We don't want you frustrated. Well, I can't think when I'm hungry. <laughs> well, the oh. county has the, the cafeteria too, which we don't. You know, that's there's a difference there. Yeah. You guys can just run downstairs and grab a bowl of chili or something. You know, we're, 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 we don't have that luxury here. I don't care. However, you guys can hang out. Well, I, I know that Commissioner Holmes, for yeah. instance, yeah. says he's out of here. I think I've gotten some guidance. I'll try to do that. Uh, we talk about this in our next meeting. Continue this. I did have some other things that I wanted to cover under the uh, the board process. If there's anything, other comments on the draft agenda? Get them. Uh, if you flip over to page 40, um, and let me go down to the second one first. Uh, this is the common or work technology. I did have a conversation with my friend who's on the Jacksonville City Council. They have uh, 19 members on their council, and they had the uh, problem of the chair was not recognizing uh, people in the order that they raised their hand. And so they did implement a technology solution to that where you push a button and it, it keeps track of who rang in first, um, and they said that that uh, works fairly well for them. Um, they also have a rule there that nobody can speak for more than five minutes. You know, the board members can't speak for more than five minutes. They don't have a countdown clock on that, but it's expected that to share with me. We do. Uh, St. Pete City Council has that. Uh, there's a three-minute limit, and but you can kind of come back around for secondary comments, so it's really a total of six minutes. Okay. Yeah, and we did just implement a new system where we um, vote electronically and we, we, we hit a button to be in the queue to speak. Okay. It also, I mean, the chair always has discretion on who to call regardless of that. It does help keep track of who's in line, but sometimes a chair may want to go out of turn to select someone who may have an expertise or to anchor a conversation that they have ownership. You know, it might be their their um, And with Robert's rule, they're as the chair, you have the right to do that. Exactly. And that's what concerns me about the calling on somebody in the order that they put their hand up. But the chair has complete discretion to do to do what's necessary as you call it, anchor the conversation. And I w wouldn't want to get it tied into that situation, you know, where we have to call people based on when they raise their hand. And as long as they're getting acknowledged. But it is difficult to see when you're in yeah. the chair, especially far right and left. Right. So maybe just as an aid for the chair to know who wants to speak. Well, I, I really kind of think with the exception of special issue, like you go back to the chair of the committee, for instance, and talked about it, mm -hmm. um, you would you would do that, but otherwise, the uh, kind of doing it by the order that people raised it to prevent being beaten up for uh, other, well, you're, you're discriminating against somebody or you're not. I, I look at the chair's role as to facilitate the board's business, not to direct the board in, in a, any particular issue. I may feel strongly about something, I'll, I'll make it my comments, but 
I won't manipulate the board to that. I, I, that's just my chance question. Yeah. So are you recommending just a standalone for letting the chair know who wants to speak, or are you talking about like an integrated agenda um, solution that St. Peter and the county is moving to as well, where you've got everything right. on the iPad, including the agenda, you can vote on there? Uh, Jacksonville also does voting, so maybe it's included kind of in one of these packages. So you're looking more longer term? Well, I, I would be open to that. I'm just I don't know if the county has an electronic voting. We're moving, we're moving to it now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what exactly what it cost, but when we implemented, when St. Pete City Council implemented it last year, it was more expensive than you would have thought. It was over, easily over ninety thousand dollars. I think. And it does add a little bit more time because instead of all yays and nays. I mean, you have to kind of go through, remind people, hit your button. It takes a few seconds for it to show up. Then the clerk has to read out what the votes are. So it's take, it takes a little bit of time for St. Pete. We have an eight-member board, so we would have to do that for a 15-member board. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, just for consideration, just to put that out there. I just there. had a question. How, how, do you, how does the, how is the, uh, the vote... How is the public aware of what the vote is? It's it's on a big screen. It's is probably it? why it's so expensive. It's it's not just we're not just hitting buzzers. It's tied into what shows up on the screen that's televised. So someone watching at home would see all of our names and the yeses and the noes. Can can we ask the staff to investigate this further based on the guidance that yes we'd like to have. Technology to to aid the chair in this process. Do you have you want to say something based on that? I I can just tell you. I mean, if you want the technology and you feel that works well for you, I would find that technology distracting to me sitting in front of me. And just knowing what I know now, being in the position I am in Dunedin now. Granted, we only have five people. But I have thought about this from a PSTA perspective. I think what takes more time and what can be a little stumbling is trying to look two different ways when you're trying to get who's putting their hands up first. If I were in your shoes, <laughs> I would look at one end and go right up the row, or I would look at the other end and go right up the row mm -hmm. and keep it simple. And I would switch back and forth to be fair, um, I just wouldn't worry about who put their hand up first. Then you're not missing everybody, you're acknowledging everybody, everybody gets their opportunity to say something or not. Nobody speaks twice until everybody has spoken. And you, it's always covered and you're not doing this head back and forth thing, you're not missing anybody. That is what I do in Dunedin. Now I will say that if there is a motion on the table, the person who made the motion gets to speak first. That's how we do it, and the seconder gets to speak second. And then you would just go back, again, down one side of the row and one the other. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it's really simple. I think if we get off of this thing about who raises their hand first, it, it just, you know, it, it keeps everything flowing. And that's how we do it in our city, and we have a very well-run meeting. I think that's called Robert's Rules of the It is. It is, and so we, you know, I, if everybody wants to see more about the technology, feel free. I can tell you that me having to do this, if I were in that position, would be more distracting to me than just doing the business at hand and going down the road, down the road. Well, I see you working at an iPad, so I think you can handle it. Oh, yeah. I just, it does create frustration when you're chairing a meeting and you miss somebody. Right. And they want to say something. So I, I see what the chair is saying. I think it would simplify. Yeah. He'd know right in front of him everyone who wants to speak. So. It's, it's part of it's, the future. Let's it's, uh, and, and I'm not sure that I want to do the voting and use it right now because of the. I don't want to slow the process right. down. And we do most of our things by consensus. I mean, it's unanimous. Um, 
so I wouldn't I wouldn't want to slow that down. I, I will. Um, I, I get daggers. I cite daggers when I'm skipping somebody. Oh, that yes. And uh, you, well, you yes. know it too, as, as chairman. Um, Can so, I make a suggestion? Though? Yeah. Why don't we actually have to look at a scalable solution okay. that yeah. you can just start with who wants to speak, and then maybe you can move towards agenda automation. Yeah. Maybe you look at I legislate. Maybe that does that. But just look at some kind of scalable right. solution that doesn't have to be the full line. And then if Julie doesn't want to use it, she doesn't have to use it next year. Is that acceptable to the group? Okay. And I will tell you the I legislate is great. We use it in and we love it. No, we don't have the voting feature, but we love okay. it. What's, yeah. what's the possibility that our agenda could be put on our I legislate. I mean, I don't know how that works from a technology perspective, but if we already have it on our laptop, you probably have it on your iPad, then why can't we just get the agenda on there? Yeah, we'll look into that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can use your program at the county. Maybe so. We're all about partnering. You That's know. right. That's so maybe we can just tie in getting your things program. Done. We it's partner with a lot just, of cities. It's just purchasing licenses. Uh, I have clients that other clients that use it for really? their agendas and just well, there you purchasing go. licenses. I love it. The, the app. Um, I absolutely the app on love it. iPad is free. Done. I have gone uh, so paper. Okay, let me. I let think me the say problem that. is the only apps they have are iOS apps. The no, what? Nothing wrong. Are, are. I'm yeah, I'm you Apple, Apple freak. You're, you're really an Apple guy. You're an Apple freak. Well, but Rachel's stupid. sitting over there with a Surface. I haven't had. I was so disappointed. disappointed. Sorry, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Than All right, let me, let me try to bring the plane down again. Um, we have consensus without objection that we will ask staff to investigate a technology solution, come back to us. Uh, we also, uh, without objection, we have consensus that we'll ask staff to investigate a on legislator and agenda package. All right, so that, that's. Uh, I had a couple of other things that I really wanted to get your input on, on the word operations. Um, the, uh, we have, the first item on the list was relocating the council to sit up next to the chair. Uh, that uh, would be helpful from the standpoint of being kind of a parliamentary and it's whispering, is that continue, it's postponed <laughs> until um, yeah. And uh, I, it could also, if we get to technology, we might be the, the aid to help managing that. I think it's a good I, idea. I see some advantage to that. Is, does anybody see a downside to that? No, I don't. The question of where you're going to put him on your left or He'll be where Brad, Brad's on your right. He'll be yeah. on our Brad should be on the right, the attorney should be on the left. That's the way it used to be. Really? Until we moved to this facility, and then actually for a time being, the CEO and myself moved to the staff table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, dais was expanded, and then the CEO moved back to where Brad now sits, and the general counsel was moved to the end. But when we were over at the old facility in 49, I sat to the left of the chair, and the CEO sat to the right of the chair. It was a, it was a narrower U-shaped Table. Yes. And so, so. Other other than the recent issue with um, continuing a motion versus tabling it, is there a need for this? The, the other I think the so. other benefit of it, from my perspective, would be during the public comment period, mm -hmm. if uh, if someone gets up there that Alan uh, recognizes as an attorney uh, and in some kind of you know, or a bid protest or something that I don't recognize who the person is, then they can alert the chair that this is actually something that's an arbitration or, you know. Well, I mean, when we've had people who spoke on behalf of employees who were suing the SDA, it's hard for me to get bills just like it is for board members in that situation, bills concentrating on what the person is saying or can, you know, and I'm not able to get the chair's attention say we're in litigation with this individual or over this matter, you might want to warn the board. 
So I have that same problem sometimes sitting at the end that I'm at. It was a little bit easier when I was directly out in front, <laughs> sitting at staff table actually, than it is up at the dais right. because I could kind of give a little wave and usually catch the attention of the chair. Well, yeah, I th that speaks to my angst about employees getting up there and talking about their spouses being poorly treated or an attorney getting up there and pleading a case on the public, you know, dime. I mean, that is so inappropriate. Public comment is public comment should be to, to the agenda, not employee, employee for our relations. And, I, you know, that's, we would never, on the commission, we never have that. We got our own problems. So. We do, but we don't have employees. We've never had an employee. Either well, way. If, if we had talked about the, the who would be allowed if, if somebody spoke, who would, how would our interaction occur after they spoke? And in the past, we've allowed board members to interact with them, which I think we said previously when we went through this discussion that we did not want that to occur. If it was an employment issue, if it was a, right. an arbitration, if it was a, a lawsuit, and it, with uh, the proper guidance, the chair can say, Thank you for your comments and call the next person. But wouldn't you stop the con you wouldn't allow the comments? I would well, that's the question. Well if it's under your present rules you don't limit what the, as long as the public comment relates to PSTA, you don't limit what the person who's speaking can say. You would have to change your rules and, which you can do. Public comment you control public comment. It's not just open. So you can control generally what people can get up and speak about. Um, but, but there's some state legislation type stuff dealing with what we could or couldn't control. Do you want to research? Do we, do we no, want to I mean, research? You, you have to allow people to speak about items that you're going to take action on. So right. that are non that are substantive. So not ministerial like approving minutes. So if if there's five <laughs> items on the consent agenda and three of them are approvals of per procurements, and somebody wants to get up and speak on the public comment and those one of those three items, you have to let them do that. But there's nothing that says you have to let an attorney get up there and speak about something that's in litigation. Yeah, and that's, um, that's but, but you would have to change your rules. Just like there is a presently the rules state that a board member can interact with the person who got up and spoke under public comment. So if you want to change that, then we we would need to change that. But I think we should absolutely and change Julie that. Julie and I had a discussion too. at the last meeting. I think we need to have a discussion. That's change it. That's I, what the I board agree. wants, so that's what's in the rules. It's a board free for all right now. If, if the board member wants to interact or wants to say something about a comment made, it should be directed at the chair, not at the person speaking. And number one. And frankly, I think it probably, the dialogue probably shouldn't take place <coughs> until sometime later in the meeting, if, if it's under uh, board member comments or something else, because then you're just opening up that person's just going right. to, they're just going to respond. Right. What, well, what it, my, my, so my other boards do is they either direct their comments to the CEO and say, we want you to meet with that person and get more yeah, information and report back to the board. Or they make the board members wait until their board member comment at the end of the meeting. Yeah. And then if they want to have a discussion amongst the board or with the CEO, they do it at that time. That's, 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 that's kind of how we do it. The, the, the practice that I've been using is that if they have a question about the person complaining about the route, that it's okay to ask, well, is that the corner of 22nd Street and, or 22nd Avenue and 66th Street, that that, that that is allowed, but I got in trouble on that in the last, uh, in the, the routes where Abby Johnson said she wanted to ask a question and I was only allowing questions and then she went on to, uh, yeah. 
do make comments, and I think I, that's the case where I should have gotten up the gavel and said, I'm sorry, you're, you're, kind of you're what is your question? Uh, but another way to do it would be just to say, uh, just direct staff to interact and get the information. But on the other hand, if we're in a public uh, hearing process and we don't understand what the person is saying, and we need clarification, either the chair can ask that or maybe the CEO, but... Uh, and there may be a difference between public hearing and public comment. Yeah, that is different. Okay. I think, I think you know, when you're on the public comment, you're not necessarily voting on the item. They're getting up to speak about something that's generally not on the agenda. That nobody's looked into or... Yeah. Right. Although that comment at the last meeting with Commissioner Johnson was during a public hearing. Yeah. Right. But then but, the comment... But even so... But the other comment that um, Council Member Newton was... That discussion that he wanted to, you know, enter into was under public comment. No, it was, was the very the next hearing? comment by Mr. Rask, and he was in it still in the public hearing. Okay, I was thinking that was the public comment, because yeah. he talked about more things than just the public hearing, maybe that's why oh, I know. I know. I think any questions should be directed either to the chair or the CEO or the attorney, whichever applies. Um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Wojcicki's statement. I think. I think it's very important for us to be welcoming and to, to listen and embrace public comment. And I think some people going up to speak at a microphone, it's, it's nerve-wracking. Uh, and we know, it's, we've heard time and time again how difficult it is for some people to get here. So I think it's intimidating enough to speak in front of a 15-member board, but then for someone, but to feel like you might get grilled like you're in a courtroom by someone sitting in a chair behind a big desk. I think it's unfortunate that sometimes that happens, but if there's something that we could do to encourage, to, well, to not encourage a back and forth, but if there needs to be a comment made, it should be made to the chair. Yep. So for instance, if somebody wants to find out if that was at 66 and 20th Avenue, uh, they would ask the chair and the chair would make the the ask of the person speaking. Well, no. Or you can say, we'll have the CEO or look into that or yeah. Yeah. whatever is needed. I mean, if it's a more complicated question, then maybe just have staff look into it. Can, can we have Alan take a look at our rules for this and sort of try to incorporate these in yeah. to that? Yeah. So we can, then we present that to the board. And did you make a decision about where I'm going to sit? Yes. <laughs> I'm moving you. Well, just don't know. Left. I guess I should know where I'm going to get my chair. I got you Julie's chair? Yep. Just without objection, we will adopt that by consent. Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, we've already talked about completion times. Um, can, can I bring up one? I'm sorry. Well, yes. Before we're talking about the rules and you have it on, on here. There is nothing specific in the rules and regulations that adopt Robert's rules. Yeah, I um, that. And honestly, I don't remember the history of that. Generally, we ha I've always followed Robert's rules outside of our specific rules. Um, I think it's generally accepted in practice, but I think it would be a good idea if we were just to add a sentence to the rules that said we adopt Robert's rules. Newly revised, please. <laughs> Are you adept at Robert's rules? Yes. <laughs> well, and we've I already even debated them. Well, <laughs> I even brought it. I have the. Yes. Um, I've actually done a presentation to Laurel Commission about Robert's rules. So. Oh wow. Um, it's good for you. It, it's a good thing as a guide. You know, you use it as a guide. It's a guide. Just right. It's a guide. And, and if you say that in the rules, that that keeps it from being right. where someone is technical. technical about everything, but it's used right. as a guideline. Perfect. Unless otherwise stated in our board and procedures. Right. And, and with Alan sitting next to the chair, I think that would help. Exactly. The, the other thing is uh, just what came up at our last meeting where uh, we do have a, Roberts does allow an uh, appeal to the, uh, the chair's ruling. 
And if you have an appeal, if you don't like what I'm saying, I, I kind of did that with Julie. I said, well, what's the basis for your, your, your appeal? And then I reversed myself, which I think was appropriate in that case. But uh, I would just encourage, if you do have, uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, say, Mr. Chair, I'd like to appeal your ruling. And then we can trigger that formal process rather than trying to go to uh, Alan or somebody else. And if, <clears throat> if I would say, well, no, I'm going to stay with my ruling, then it, it takes a second and a majority vote to override the chair. And, and I think in some cases I, I have or I should at least say, well, unless there's a, um, a, a formal vote by the members, Here's what the, the chair's rule is. Uh, so, I, if that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, it might be helpful, Mr. Chairman, if the, our attorney, the parliamentarian, just puts together a one one sheet sort of main Robert sheet rule. Sheet. Yeah, a main Robert rules rules for people. I think a lot of us are familiar with it, but you know. It might be a nice little thing for everyone to have and email to everybody and as a reminder. And actually, Robert Schultz has a cheat sheet, but if you look at it, it's kind of really hard to yeah. follow. Yeah, put it in your own words. It, it it yeah, but really it's about 10 pages long. Exactly. Right. So it, it might just be helpful. Well, actually, in a separate like card where I can show it to you, but it, it's... It's pretty hard to follow because it's in a table format. Um, but I can put together a little. I think that would be helpful. All right. So, are there other items dealing with the B board meeting operation that anyone would like to suggest to bring up? Is there other business? I, I had one item. I think the MPO is having a workshop on the 21st. September. I looked at the agenda and it seems fascinating. I mean, to cover all that territory in one day is going to be. Is it all day? The half day, and the chairman of the MPO has told the executive director of the MPO he thinks they will not get into it all, and so they're looking at a second okay. meeting. The, the executive director of the MPO and I discussed having a, a joint. A, a third meeting, not this workshop or maybe the two parts of this workshop, but a third meeting um, sometime in the winter. I, I don't, I'm not sure if he, he wasn't sure if we could get it done. Maybe we could get it done in December. A joint meeting of the PSTA board and the MPO board, um, where we would perhaps uh, PSTA would maybe respond to whatever comes out of their, the, the MPO board's workshop discussion as a way that we, we the transit provider, can feel we can fit in. So that's sort of the schedule. And given that two of you are on the MPO, the meet's in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and just, yeah. <laughs> I know at the, the MPO, at our work session on September 21st, we have the discussion of the flex funds set yeah. for 11 o'clock. Where is the MPO from the work shop? It's at uh, Collaborative Epicenter. Labs. Epicenter. 9 o'clock. 830. On September 21st, it's a half day. So 830 to 12.30.
he was the guy that was responsible